Welcome back to the Worthy Woman podcast with Aston Simmons, where we talk all things worthy women, relationships, motherhood, navigating it all as the worthy women that we are. And today I have a very special human with me, such a beautiful soul. I'm so excited to have this conversation. Um, I have the beautiful Courtney Wilder with me from Seeking Wilder. This incredible woman is an intuitive life and business coach. And I honestly just see this woman as a soul sister. The first time we met, I was like, yes, I can feel the depths of her heart. And I just felt so safe in this beautiful woman's space to have deeper conversations. I know the first thing we dived into was like gene keys, human design, like all of these deep parts of understanding self. And that's why I wanted to get this beautiful woman on the podcast, because so many women that I speak to struggle with trusting your intuition connecting to your heart, listening to your soul's whispers, knowing what's right for you and trusting that in all the areas, whether that's motherhood, whether that's your relationships to start one, to end one, you know, whether you should work on it together, whether you should move, whether you should change careers or start a business. There's all these areas where really connecting to your intuition is what Courtney calls your secret source. And that's what I want to talk about, how connecting to your intuition is the key to your success in every area. So if you have been feeling stuck in your head, not knowing what to do in areas of your life, whether it's motherhood, business, relationships, you need to listen to this episode and take notes. It's going to be deep. It's going to be juicy. And um, you're going to be connecting to your soul literally in this episode and your intuition. So get excited. I'm going to hand it over to the beautiful Courtney so that she can share the beautiful human behind the work she does, because there is so many parts to this incredible woman that I want to share with you. So welcome, beautiful. Oh my gosh, what an introduction. Oh, my heart is so full receiving those words. Thank you. Thank you so much, my love. Um, yeah, so hello everyone. I'm Courtney. If you don't know me, if you don't follow me, what are you doing? I'm amazing. Come yes. over and say hi. <laughs> well, I am a intuitive life and business coach. As you said, I'm a mother of an almost three-year-old son, my darling little Willoughby. I have a podcast myself. I wrote a book I am a mermaid. I pretty much live down at the beach. You can always find me down off the beach, often jumping off the jetty. And I'm just, I always say that I'm a bestie to many because as you said, when I meet people, I'm not, I've never been one for surface level connections. Like I really connect with people's soul and I really want to know people. And I also want people to really know me. I they crave those deep soul connections. And I'm someone who, it was to my detriment when I was younger. I used to see the best in people and treat people as if they were their best because I could see it in them. I could see their greatness. I could see their essence. I could see their fullest potential. And it got me in trouble in my early dating life. I'm not going to lie. I fell into the, the pattern of dating a few narcissists and treating them as if they were the greatest <laughs> thing on earth, which they yeah. hadn't really lived up to that potential. But now I take that gift and I channel it into the work that I do and I help like hold up that sacred mirror to people's essence to their soul purpose to their greatest potential and remind them of who they are and help them reconnect into it of course by tapping into their intuition because when you're connected into your intuition it's impossible not to know yourself. Mm. It's impossible to hide from yourself or to limit yourself and to not want to live up to what is your sole purpose. Oh my God. Goosebumps already. Seriously, I'm so excited for this conversation. And I love what you said because I'm the same. I'm here for the depths. I'm here for those deep conversations. A lot of women listening are similar to me. They're very sensitive souls. They you know, have big hearts. They're empaths. And this can definitely get us into trouble in relationships. And I have struggled with this also, like wanting to see the best in people, exactly like you said. And I have so many women share that with me that they, and I think this is the gift of the feminine. So many women can see the possibility and the potential mm. in their men or their children or businesses and things like that. And we we hold on to that vision and we want to help them get to that place. And that's incredible and it's beautiful. But at the same time, 
I know for me, I had to learn how to actually get to that place for myself first and not wait. You know, I'm a big one for like worthy women don't wait. You know, you don't have to wait for your partner to be ready. You don't have to wait for your, you know, X, Y, and Z to change. You know, you don't need those external things to happen. You can, you know, you can start to connect to your intuition and follow through with what is important to you or what is going to light your soul on fire. So I'm so excited to dive into this conversation. And there is so many parts to your intuition and where it plays out. What's kind of coming through for me first is how do we even connect to our intuition? Because I know that it's there. I know for me, it's been a journey to come back to that place in myself. And I hear it now louder than the voices in my head. And this is what I hear from women all the time, that they're like, there's just so many voices in my head or like the fear is so loud. So they don't hear the the whisper of the intuition, which to me is always softer, but I've literally trained myself now to the intuition is the voice that I hear first. And it's the one I follow. It often doesn't make sense. And that's how I know <laughs> it's, it's my intuition um, because it's not logical. You know, it doesn't tick all the structure, masculine boxes, but it feels true. And so I know how to trust it now. And I suppose I've got enough evidence from life that when I do, it works out. But I know in the beginning, there is this part that, and so many women say this, they say, I get in my head. I don't, you know, I can't make a decision. Um, You know, I had a woman share with me the other day, she had an opportunity come through for her for work and it didn't make logical sense, but it, it made her soul excited And then she didn't know what to do. And, you know, I had to help her come back to her heart and connect to that deeper place. And um, she was able to trust her intuition. But I know so many women struggle with this, whether it's in motherhood, you know, doubting their ability as a mother, doubting their, you know, to know whether they know what their child needs or whether they're enough for their child. Um, But even in their relationships you know, doubting if their partner is the right, right person for them or, you know, if if this is what they want to create in their life. So how do we connect to our intuition? Mm, I think there is a huge, like you say, there's almost like an epidemic of not trusting ourselves and people huge. not trusting themselves. But we have to understand that we are trained and taught not to trust ourselves, not to listen to our intuition, not to listen to our body. And I think back to going to school, you can't even trust yourself to go to the toilet when you want to go to the toilet. It's make sure that you're going on recess, make sure that you're going on lunch. We can't trust ourselves to intuitively eat when we want to eat. We have to eat at recess and lunch and all of these sort of things. And it's, we're taught from such a young age to not listen to our intuition, to not listen to our cues, instead to listen to some something or someone external. And then we have, you know, and we grow up and we keep taking in that message and we keep taking in that message. And then that we don't listen to our intuition. And I say that often everybody is intuitive. Every single mm. person is intuitive. Every single person has their intuition. And often when people haven't been or they're like, I don't know how to hear it, I don't know how to listen to it, I say that looking back can really help first and foremost because we all have, I have ever met someone who hasn't had an experience when they were like, oh, I got this niggle, I got this gut instinct, I had this inner knowing and I didn't follow it. And then it didn't work. And then I should have, like, everybody has that instinct. I just should have listened to myself. I just should have listened to my gut. And so when we can do it that way, you already have evidence that Mm. your intuition is there. Because if we haven't been listening to our intuition, we don't, we don't have the evidence yet that our intuition works and follows things through, but that we can still find evidence by looking backwards at when we didn't listen to it. And I want to say to everybody that's listening that humans, we love to overcomplicate things. We love to make things very difficult and very hard. And especially the simple, powerful things of life. People come to me and they think it's going to be this really intense, really woo-woo, esoteric practice to connecting to their intuition. And it's going to take a really long time and they're going to have to do all these things. And I'm like, my love, it is one of the simplest things in the world to do it just takes some time and some space to listen to yourself and to yes. trust yourself. One of my most favorite practices 
of listening into your intuition. And I promise I'll tell you a, a little bit later after this practice, I'll tell you what is not your intuition to help with that fear. Awesome. But a simple practice to listen to your intuition is just to close down your eyes and take a deep breath into your body and just land into your body. Just mm. breathe into your body, just being present with the here and now. And just notice Something that helps for me is I like to check in on where I am in my body mm. when I'm doing this. Where am I residing in my body? And often if your mind's been going a million miles an hour, for me, I'm, I'm living in my head and I'm like, okay, can I just breathe myself back down into my heart? Can I just feel myself dropping a little bit further into my heart? And I just take, and this is not an extended period of time. This is just a couple of breaths, maybe three deep breaths while I'm doing this. And then I want you to ask yourself a question you know the answer is yes to. And again, we don't want to overcomplicate things. The intuition is a muscle and like any muscle, it needs to be strengthened. So I don't want you to ask yourself a yes question that is like, should I change my career or anything yes. like that? We need <laughs> to, probably we need to build up your intuitive <laughs> muscle. Just ask, is my name, whatever your name is. So I always go, is my name Courtney? Because that is a yes. That is all, that is always a yes. And I know a thousand percent that is a yes. And then I breathe into that. Yes. So breathe Breathe into your body and just with curiosity, notice where do you feel your yes? Mm. How does your yes feel? Is it a knowing? Is it an understanding? Is it a color? Is it a word? Is it a sensation in your body? Where do, is your yes felt? I feel my yes like sort of between my stomach and my heart and it feels like this warmth and it feels like this want for my for my lungs to open and it's like I want to expand I want to roll my shoulders back I want to open my chest when I'm feeling my yes mm. but when you first do this it, it may just be the subtlest little shift it may just be the littlest shift in your breath but it's the presence with it and breathing into that yes and when you start feeling those little changes or noticing those little changes or hearing that yes if you have more of that clear audience if that is more your thing you say to yourself, thank you, I felt that. Really holding that reverence for yourself, holding that reverence for your intuition for showing you that yes. And I say, do a deep breath, have a bit of a shake out, you know, shake out your shoulders. And then you want to ask yourself a question that you know the answer is no to. Again, super simple no question you oh, might cool. use is my name is my name Courtney. Again, we're not overcomplicating things. And you're just breathing into that. No, where is that no felt in the body? How is that no felt in the body? Is it a knowing and understanding, a color, a word? Are you hearing that no? Are you sensing that no? What does it feel like to hold that no in the body and really going to that place in your body and being like, can I expand that feeling? Can I expand that feeling? Can I expand that feeling? And again, asking yourself, like saying to yourself, thank you, I felt that and really dropping that in. And it's so powerful just to feel what yes and no feels like in the body because we're so quick to just say yes to things or just say no to things from the mind and not really dropping in to how it feels for us and how it feels for us. And I say with my clients when they first start working with me, I'm like, we're going to need to strengthen your intuitive muscle. So you're going to need to ask your intuition things and then you have to follow through but again if you don't want to be asking the big yes or no questions of life and putting that kind of pressure on a weak muscle it's yes. like never having exercise going to the gym and trying to do 150 kilo deadlift like yeah. it's Crazy. it's not the it's not the best for your muscles you're probably going to end up like hurting yourself so instead in like introduce it to something that doesn't that doesn't carry a big weight so mm. i always start off like with coffee Yes. Or with food, like, do I actually really desire to have a coffee today? Asking myself yes and no. Yeah. Or am I at a cafe? I always get so much. I just get really excited by like all the delicious things at the cafe. And I'm like, oh, I want all of the things. Actually, what do I want? Feeling into, do I want the smashed up? Do I want the granola or whatever it is? No, yes. Noticing that yes and no. But then following through. Yes. Because if you're starting this practice, and you do the yes and no practice and it says no to coffee to you in that moment, I don't want you to be like, well, I'm tired, so I'm going to have a coffee anyway. Mm. 
because that's you saying to yourself, mm, intuition, I hear you, but you are not important. That's you putting out your inner voice. You're shrinking yourself. You're putting out your inner flame, your inner power. So it's about starting with these smaller things in life but having that practice of doing it every single day and it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger and eventually you can ask really big yes, yes. and no questions that have consequences in your life because you have built up the foundations of trust with your intuition. Yeah. And something I want to add on to that is that how you were saying that the decisions that our intuition calls us to make doesn't always make logical sense. Mm. That's because our intuition is often playing five, 10 years ahead. 100%. Yeah. It's such a bigger vision. It's so much bigger than where we are right now. And mm -hmm. that's exactly why I think we need to listen to it because it helps take us out of being in something where our vision is so small it's so limited but your intuition is so expansive you know it's so powerful and I love that you shared that that is your favorite way to connect to your intuition because that's also my favorite way um is literally three deep breaths into my heart closing my eyes and I feel my intuition between my heart and my stomach and it's mm. like a warm expansive feeling and as a mother of two kids, having a business, a busy life, we, you know, we were talking about that before we went live, those kind of practices to connect to my intuition, it's so powerful. And like you said, it's simple, it's effective. I can do it multiple times a day and it just helps me get back into my body, back, you know, recentered to myself and connected to my power, which is my essence, which is what you talked about, you know, that we all have this intuitive part of ourselves, which is our essence. And it's so much more powerful than anything that we do on the outside. And um, yeah, and that's my favorite way also to connect inwards and a way that I share because it really is simple. And your logical mind is like, oh, it can't be that. They can't be that simple. And I get that. Mine used to do all of that. And I really loved how you said to look backwards. You know, look back and see where you have used your intuition because you have. Whether you're consciously doing it or not, it's there. It wants to serve you. It wants to help you. Um, you know, it's it's like I see it as like my internal best friend or internal cheerleader who is like wants me to win and wants me to access my greatest potential. And I know when I listen to it, I step into my greatest potential. And when I don't, and I look back, there is times where I haven't exactly what you said. I'm like, oh, I can see where not listening to my intuition actually caused me more pain and suffering. Um, even though maybe the decision I made was logical um, at the time, it was logical based on just that moment. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's, there's such limited information in just that moment sometimes. And exactly what you said as well, connecting into the body. I think that is so important and why so many people are disconnected from their intuition is because they're disconnected from their own bodies. And women, particularly, I, I hear this from women, um, and I know that it makes it hard for them to feel their emotions. And, you know, so many, I'm sure you experience this. So many women come to me and they're so suppressed in what they're feeling. You know, they're so suppressed, they're so tight, they're so restricted. And then they're wanting to have these deep connections, communication, you know, deep communication, deep intimacy. You know, they want the depths because it's that feminine in them that wants more, like in their relationships or in motherhood or in life. And then they're coming to this place of it's not there. And what they all say to me is I need to work on my relationship. You know, he needs to change. He needs to do X, Y, and Z, or, you know, this needs to happen. And all these external things need to happen for me to experience this deep connection. And you've touched on it already that it really is about your connection with yourself and with your intuition. Um, so I'd love to dive into that a bit more. If you've had experience with clients who, and I'm sure you have held on to emotions. And what I see in my work is that they then project their emotions onto their partner. And then they think their husband or their partner is emotionally unavailable. And yes, there are some people who appear to be emotionally unavailable, but on a deeper level, are we connected to what we're feeling? Are we in our body? Are we processing what we're feeling? 
And then are we giving them the space to do that too? You know, that's been a big piece in my relationship because my husband was, you know, what someone would call emotionally unavailable when we first met. Um, And I would project a lot of my emotions onto him because I hadn't learned how to process them and hold them in my own body. And again, trust my intuition that it'll be okay. I won't be consumed by this emotion. I won't become the emotion if I feel it, you know. Um, I won't die. Like my ego would be saying, no, this is death. Don't feel that. Don't feel anger. Don't feel grief or whatever was there. But the more I learned to listen to my intuition and feel it and actually process it, I didn't suppress it, the deeper my connection was with myself And I've said this before, ironically, I learned that it was about meeting myself first. Then I could meet my husband in that deeper place. Um, And ironically, I I then didn't need it, if that Mm. makes sense. You know, I didn't like crave or need to meet him in that deeper place anymore because I was meeting myself. But then we we met there because I had done the work and, and he could see that and that he felt safer than to meet me in that. So yeah, I'd love to talk about that because I know so many women struggle with this. There's a really popular saying that I completely disagree with, which is you can't love, what is it? You can't love anyone else if you don't love yourself. Mm. And I completely disagree with that because there is so many women, so many people, so many humans who have been through really traumatic things in their life that then it's made them really, it's made it really difficult for them to love themselves because there's so much grief and there's so much trauma and maybe so much even hate and anger that they're they're holding onto because they're suppressing their feelings. So they can't, if you can't feel yourself, you can't love yourself. Yeah. They might say that they love themselves because it's the thing that, that that we say now, but they're not really feeling themselves. Whereas I always say that, when you love yourself, you allow yourself to open to others to let them love you even more. Yes. Because you can still love somebody else and not loving yourself. But when you love yourself fully for all of you, for all of your phases, for even the hurt, for even the trauma, for even the anger, mm. for all of it, you let people really see you because you're like, I am lovable in all of this. Yes. And instead of closing off and closing off from myself, and when we close off from ourselves, we close off from our partners. Yes, We close 100%. off from our friends. We close off from everyone else because we don't feel safe being with ourselves. Yes. So we're not going to let anybody else in because that, like you said, feels like death. Yeah. It feels like complete danger because there's no, no container of safety. So with feeling and allowing yourself to feel and allowing yourself to process and allowing yourself to connect into your intuition, that's where you open to such like deep soul-centered connections. Mm. I always say I was, am I, am I allowed to swear? Yes, yes. Okay, yeah. I was the biggest fuck boy you <laughs> ever met when I was young. I was. I was a total yeah. player. I was like, nobody put me in a box. I yes. was a, like, I was wild. Just wild, yeah. I was wild. You know, my thing was always like, I'm living up to my last name. No one can contain me. No one can put me into a box. Yes. But that's because I was so wounded and yeah. so hurt and so traumatized. Yes from things that had happened to me in my childhood that I didn't feel safe Mm. to feel and to be with myself because there was so much there. My mind was so tumultuous. And when I started truly healing, truly feeling, not just feeling the magnitude when I had to because I was having a mental breakdown when I was Mm. like, actually, when I'm, when I'm stable, I'm still going to let myself feel all of it. Yes. Then I started having deep love I I was able to feel safe with friends but I wasn't able to say I wasn't able to feel safe in romantic relationships and then when I started healing it's really interesting when I was first with my now husband I used to pick fights with him all of the time Mm. it was very much like I was that uh, I was avoidant and he was I had an avoidant attachment attachment style and he had a secure attachment style and I would try and pick fights with him and he'd be like what are you doing (laughs) I'm not, yes. I'm not breaking up with you. We're not, we're not breaking up. This is so silly. And then I was like, oh, this is, I need to, I need to heal. I need to feel, I need to do some work on myself. And now we have the most beautiful marriage and the most beautiful relationship. 
But yeah, I think that there's so much there, like you were talking about, of like being with yourself and feeling. And I think that when we're feeling what we deem is a negative emotion, and I just mm. want to say here, there is no there negative are no emotion. Bad, there are no yes. bad feelings. There yes. are no bad feelings. But we think we're going to be in it forever. Yes. And I also just want to do a little shout out to the people that are listening that struggle with their mental health, mm. because I think that sometimes we can listen to talk, people talk about this being no bad feelings and we can be like, you have no idea. You don't know what it's like to be in the dark night of the soul. I am formally diagnosed with PTSD and bipolar. I have been through that dark night of the soul so many times. So I know what it is to feel like the joy is sucked out of life. And I just mm. want to remind you that like whenever I've been in a depressive episode, I always like look back and I'm like, turns out I have never been happy. Actually, I have never been happy, nor will I ever be happy again, which is not the truth. But all of like all of my experiences, all of my life gets filtered by that depression or that grief or whatever it is. So when we really sit with it and we process and we hold ourselves and we and we tend to ourselves and we allow ourselves to be held by someone else if that's what we're if that's what we're needing and that's what we're desiring we create this energy of safety within ourselves so it becomes easeful eventually yeah. Yeah. to open and deepen our relationship with others yeah every single relationship Every single relationship is a sacred mirror for mm. yourself. 100%. Every single one. Yes. So like a beautiful way to look at this practice, let's go with the beautiful way first, is to, I, I get my clients to do this a lot, is to close their eyes and think about somebody in your life that you really adore. Like bring them to the forefront of their mind. What are the qualities? What are the qualities in them that you absolutely adore about them that you absolutely love about them my example is always my big sister and I love her and adore her for her big kind generous heart like oh just she is sunshine and a hug in human form Mm. and it's so easy for me to say that to say that think about someone you adore and then because all of relationships are a sacred mirror what you're attracted to what you're drawn to in that person is what is alive in you. Yes. So can you say that that same sentence about yourself? Yeah. I love myself for my big, kind and generous heart. I am sunshine and a hug in human form. And when you're first starting your healing journey, it's quite uncomfortable. Everybody's always like, oh, I don't want to say that about myself. That, That feels icky. That doesn't feel true. It's so easy for them to say it about someone else. Yes. But not about it to mirror back to them. And that's the same thing. If we are feeling disconnection in our relationships, putting up that sacred mirror and asking yourself, where am I creating disconnection within myself? Yes. Where do I feel disconnected in myself? Where do I feel lonely? Where do I feel abandoned? Where do I feel ignored Mm. in that relationship that I have with myself? And it just gives you this whole different, different shift and different perspective to look at in this sort of sense of being like, of course, there's some things that we need to work on and we need to we need to do. But first and foremost, just sit with yourself and be like, did I abandon myself first? Mm. And is, is that then projecting onto my relationship? Yes, I 100% agree with this. And every time I know in my own experience in my relationship and even when I work with clients, it always comes back to us. And it's the good, the good, you know, there's no real good or bad, but so we understand what we're talking about. It's the good qualities that come back to us and the bad. I know my husband mirrors that to me all the time. And I now see trigger as trigger equals truth. You know, there's some truth there for me to see. And I'm actually grateful. I'm, you know, it sometimes is uncomfortable, but, you know, it like you said, it can get more easeful. And Why I wanted to bring this up is because I do think that the more I've been able to build the capacity or the safety in my own body to feel my emotions and process them, the clearer my intuition is, the easier I can access it. And I see this in a lot of women who are suppressing. And exactly like you said, I totally understand why they are. There's lots of trauma that's happened. There's neglect. There's, you know, all these heartbreak and, you know, horrible situations that have happened that have, you know, made them believe or conditioned them to believe that closing 
is the safest option. But they get to a point in their life where they realize, well, I don't feel safe because I'm in this prison that I've closed myself in and I want love or I want a relationship or I want a deeper relationship. And they feel like they can't access it because of these um, not negative, because they're not negative emotions, but they're labeling them as negative because we're conditioned to believe we're meant to be happy all the time, you know, which is not true about anybody. Um you know, that's literally toxic positivity. We're human beings. And to me, to be alive is to feel it all. That's what alive feel is to me, to feel it all. So I'm here to feel the grief. I'm here to feel the sadness. I'm here to feel the joy. But the way I kind of describe it to clients is it's all on one dial. So if you're turning down the pain, turning down the suffering, turning down the hurt, turning down the grief, then how can you expect to have these heightened highs of joy, ecstasy, you know, like liberation, desire, like happiness? How can you experience those turned up if you're turning down all those so-called negative emotions? For me, you've got to have the emotional body or the emotional intelligence to feel it all. That is what it is to be alive. And I know for me, in a relationship sense, the more I could feel it and face it within myself, feel it, heal it in myself, the less uncomfortable I felt about it with anybody. Because I'm like you, I when I meet someone, I'm like, show me your heart, tell me your story, like all of it. I don't want to just hear the good stuff. I want to hear all of it, you know, and And I create that safe space for my husband, my kids, myself, my clients. You know, I had a client come on a call the other day and instantly she just came on the call and felt her emotions. She was like, you're such a um, anchor for me that it's safe for me to feel my emotions. And I love that because I think in today's world, that is rare. It is really rare to be in spaces and places and with people and even in relationships where all of you is welcome. And I agree with what you said. You must, all of you must be welcome with you. And if it's not, if all of you is not welcome with you, then that is probably why you're struggling to love yourself or love another. Because let's be honest, we all have baggage. We all have bad qualities, shitty qualities, you know, nobody is perfect. And I know for me that all of me is welcome with me And having that first with myself has meant I can give that to others. And it means I'm not so scared of the, you know, not so good qualities in my husband or, or other people or my kids, if you know what I mean, I'm able to sit with it and be like, okay, I don't really like my personality doesn't like that you do X, Y, and Z, but in my heart and in my soul, like I can actually sit with that, you know, and, and be with that. I can welcome that part of you you know, because I've really welcomed that part in myself, you know, exactly what you said. It's a mirror. So I love that. And I do think it's really important to feel those feelings, you know, and, and it is a process. I'm not going to lie. It's not, it doesn't feel great always feeling your feelings. I think it's important to mention that I, there's days where I don't feel great feeling it when I'm in it, but afterwards there's that clarity. There's this the certainty that I was looking for on the outside, I find it on the inside. Is that, do you have that kind of similar experience? A hundred percent, but there's always treasure. Yeah. When I teach my clients how to embody their emotions and feel their emotions and, and truly drop into their emotions, whatever, whatever it is, whatever's there, whatever's beneath the surface, whatever they're suppressing at the time. And they have the the emotional release and we connect into it and, and and really connect into that emotion. I always ask them, like, what is the treasure that is beneath the emotion? Because there's always something there for us. 100%. And I, like there's there's those times that, you know, when I felt the the deep grief or the anger or the hurt. And there's times where I'm, where I'm saying, I'm like, I'm in a low, I, I'm in my winter, I'm turning inwards, I don't have much capacity to be magnetic and out and vibrant and it's my winter season and I'm turning in and I'm feeling there is so much to collect from those seasons as well. Mm. But because we live in a society where the expectation is to be in summer all the time, yeah, oh to be full all the time, 
to be at our peak, to be killing it, to be hustling nonstop, we forget that we are beings of nature. Mm. Nothing in nature is full all the time. Not the moon, not the plants. Everything has these seasons of going inwards, of appearing like it's dying off or going dark and then coming back to fullness so it's this piece of being like imagine if we didn't have the new moon imagine Mm. if the moon was just full all the time there's a reason why lunatic is called lunatic and why in full moons hospitals and aged care workers are always like it's a time because it's the intense and we feel the intensity of the full moon as human beings. Imagine if that was just always, Mm. it would be a little bit chaotic. So we need those seasons of turning inwards as well and sitting with it. And I also want to say that when I started actually feeling my feelings and processing my feelings and going in to feel them, to process them, to collect the treasure, they no longer lasted as long. Yes. When you're suppressing them and suppressing Mm. them and suppressing them, they're still there. You can feel them just below the surface, but you keep swallowing them down and keep swallowing them down. So it it ends up lasting so much longer. That energy of tension like lives within you so much longer because it's not getting that space to release. Yes. But when you get to fully drop into it and be like, it is okay for me to feel this and it is safe because I have created a container of safety for me to feel this feeling. And then you get that release and that relief afterwards. Yeah, you may still need some extra like aftercare in TLC for the next few days afterwards, but that energy of tension subsides and the emotion starts to release and you get to gain the treasure that was underneath it and the clarity and the understanding. And then that starts to move you. I always refer to the the seasons, like it starts to move you out of that inwards death energy of winter and going forward into that that spring into that energy of like oh maybe I am wanting to go out again those new ideas are starting to flow in those new possibilities of seeds of intention that I can plant and start putting out to the world start coming in again and you start moving into that outward energy again yes and I think everyone always says after a bit of a cry or something I feel so much better. I feel so much lighter. And energetically, you are lighter because you're not holding all that energy in. Like, you know, emotions are energy. So I feel the same. Like now that I just feel it all the time, I literally had a bath the other day. I I said to my husband, oh, I can feel something under the surface. Can you please go pick up the kids? They're at their nature, um, like play school. Um, can you go pick up the kids? I'm, I need to have a bath and just breathe and feel what's under the surface. And he was like, of course, babe. I w- had a bath, sat in the bath, put some music on, felt the feelings, cried the tears, and then felt so much lighter. And when he came home, he was like, babe, you look like a different woman. I'm like, I feel like a different woman. There's clarity now. I feel lighter. You know, I released what was under the surface. And that was so much faster than if I had dragged that out. And I could relate to what you shared before about, you know, in the past, I would have like started an argument with my husband about it. You know, like something was under the surface in me that I didn't want to look at. And then I would like start an argument with him. Um, Because you want to release the tension. Because I wanted to release the tension. the easiest ways to do often is in our relationships because we have a container of safety in our relationships because you're like, you're going to love me. We're married. We got kids. Like I know that me picking a fight with you, it's probably not going to be divorce. So yes. that it's where we're going to put that energy instead of being like, I'm holding tension within me. What truly is that tension and how do I release it? Yeah. So I always say like, when you're feeling that tension in a relationship, first set up the time to really feel, to process, to feel it with yourself. Yes. to drop into that emotion, to release it, to write it down, to really get to the truth of what you're feeling. Because it's like that, the old, which you probably know as the relationship coaching you're doing when people are like, I'm I'm irritated about this thing. It's this thing yes. that they do. It's this thing that you do. Oh, it when always like, comes oh, out like that on the surface. like, And it's leaves, never about that oh, thing. He leaves it's about, some, it's about something yeah, else. And then you, But it's like you've got to get down into it. So it's yes. like having that time to get down into it with yourself of being like, okay, what is it? Am I actually frustrated that they're not taking the bins out or am I, I, or is it, there's that true frustration because I feel like there's, there's disconnect or a lack of intimacy that I'm craving or a lack of feeling seen or witnessed in my relationship. And then, but the only way that we can get there is by that feeling and that dropping in with yourself 
And then I always say like right into that and then bring that sort of conversation. Yes, I 100% into agree. Your relationship. And I preach the same thing. I'm like, meet it with yourself first. Because this is why our men struggle to meet us as women, because we are emotional, we are sensitive, there's all of it, you know. And when we kind of just throw it at them, like men's emotional body is different to women's, you know, they feel flooded. Like it, they feel emotionally flooded and they don't speak or say anything because they don't know what to do with it. You know, like when we bring all of the parts, like, and just throw it at them mm-hmm. and we haven't actually first met the parts in ourselves. Um, and I know for me, when I learned how to meet those parts of myself and face them in myself straight away, like you said, it was never the thing on the surface. I'd go deeper and deeper. I'd get to the truth. And often in that treasure, there'd be something for me and something to bring to the relationship. And then I would come to the relationship and say, this is what I've learned for me. And this is what I'd love to be experiencing in the relationship. And from that place, we could actually get a solution and actually move forward. Um, You know, because you're at the core truth of what is really going on. It's never about the messy house or that he doesn't take the bins out or it's never about those things. Um, They're the symptoms, really. You know, they're just the symptoms of that deeper, um, the deeper core of what's really going on that we need to get to. So I love that. Um, I'd really love to um, come back to speaking about the fears. I know you were, we were going to, because this comes up a lot. A lot of women doubt themselves. They, um, they just experience so much fear. They can literally feel like, you know, these fears are coming up. Should I believe the fears? stay small, like you said, dim my light, not listen to my fire, you know, and it breaks my heart because I've been there before where I've dimmed my light to try and please or fit in or, and again, we've kind of been conditioned into that as women, but I feel like we're in this stage of, of of women realizing, you know, we get to liberate ourselves. We don't need to wait for the world and that conditioning to stop on the outside. We get to liberate ourselves, whether it's in motherhood or relationships or business or whatever. Um, and I part of it is dealing with the fears and, and, you know, looking at them and choosing to, okay, hear them. Maybe that's, you know, I have fears too. I'm definitely, I don't think any human being ever gets to a place where they have no fear, but I'm able to look at the fear, see that it's fear like take the feedback, look at the worst case scenario, but then take that to my intuition and then make a decision. But I know so many people and so many women really struggle with, okay, is this my fear or is this my intuition? How do I work with these? You know, and and then they kind of get stuck in that place. Your intuition will never speak to you in a fear-based language. Yes, I love that you said that. I feel the same. Yes. If you're catastrophizing, if you're thinking about you want to do something, but it's like, I can't do that because then this will happen and then this will happen and then this will happen and then my whole world will crumble and the the entire world will end. (laughs) It's so dramatic, isn't it? Fear is so so dramatic. dramatic. (laughs) That is not your intuition. And this is where it's so important and why with the practices of yes and no, it's connecting into yourself and feeling into your body. Because often people think they're connecting into their intuition, Mm. but they're connecting into a stressed out nervous system. Yes. So if you, if someone says to me, I I checked in with my intuition and it said to do this and da, 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 and this is all happening. And I'm like, beautiful. Did you check in with your intuition again? And they're like, no, no, I don't need to check into my intuition again. And they're like avoiding reconnecting intuition into their intuition again. I'm like, beautiful. You never connected into your intuition in the first place. Yes. Because your intuition, it will always, it will keep coming back and it will always be anchored into that truth again and again and again. So it doesn't matter how many times along the step of the process, you're still going to be getting that, that, that yes, that response. Whereas if you're avoiding that, then you probably connected in when you were in your head, not fully dropped in, stressed out, um, super anxious, all of those sort of things. This is why it's so important to have these practices that help you clear out your emotions, yes. help you drop in, help you embody, help you connect into your heart first to create that container to really connect into your intuition. So if you yes. find that you're connecting in and you're getting those, that fear-based sort of language, it's like, oh, I need to do a release. 
I need to do a somatic release or there's some release that needs to happen first for me to calm down my nervous system so that it, so that my intuition can get through so that I can hear it so that I can not connect into this stressed out being, this fear being rather than myself. And another thing with fear is my loves, our fear often is where our magic lies. Mm. And what I mean by that is, and I am an astrologer as well, so I'll refer back to, to something in astrology is Amazing. in astrology we have we have a planetary body in our birth charts, which is Chiron. And Chiron is known as the wounded healer or the wounded teacher. Mm. So it's often where we have a tendency to self-sabotage in life or in business charts, in business as well. But it's the healer and it's the teacher. So it's that part of us that tries to trip ourselves up just before the finish line or learn the lesson again and again and again so that then we can heal or teach or like tap into that magic in that part of our life because it's a deep lesson that we've learned. So, so often our fears can be like, uh, that's how I view my fears as well. And I'm like, beautiful. Where are you trying to keep me small so that I choose courage, so that I choose strength, so that I choose healing to then like step into my power with you? How are my fears trying to hold me back? Not because they want me to be small, but because they want me to be magnificent. And the only way I can be magnificent is if I know, if I learn how to overcome, how to prevent my fear, how to step into my courage, how to step into my strength, how to step into my power. So when Mm. you view your fears as not something that is that has it out for you. It's yes. something that's it's like, actually there to work for you. Are you re- yeah. are you ready for this? Yeah. It wants to work for you. It wants you. It wants you to befriend it. It's like that person, you know, who's like, it's the it's the devil's advocate. Yeah. It's the devil's advocate. It wants to make sure that you've thought of everything and done everything and have really claimed this for yourself before you move forward. Yes. I love that. That's so powerful. And that's a great reframe to not let it stop you. You know, that fear's job was never to stop you. It was simply maybe to ask you to call more parts of yourself forward, you know, whether it's the courage, you know, whether it's is this the lesson that we we keep relearning? Like what do we need to learn this time so that we can actually turn it into gold and turn it into healing? Um, and There's a really your- powerful book. Sorry to cut in. Yes. There's a really powerful book, but it's called The Gift of Fear. Ooh. And it talks about, especially as women, how we have this, you know, we call it like that that mother's intuition when we can yes. go, something is wrong and there yes. is no logical reason for why something is wrong, but yes. this feels like a sketchy situation and I need to get out. Yes. like, And that is so much. Like fear can also be such a gift and I love recommending that that book for, yeah, for people I'm read to it. read for people because it helps, it just helps you reframe that that our fear can help us get out of, of scary situations and dangerous situations because it's like this inner knowing something is not right. Yes. So when you realize that fear can be a gift and fear can also be a friend that is helping you grow, is helping you transform, mm-hmm. that is helping you you know, claim your essence, Mm. you stop then fearing the fear. Yeah. You stop then giving it more power than it really needs. You start being like, and I just laugh now. Like when I get those that those fear-based language and those fear-based thoughts and that that pull to self-sabotage, I'm like, oh, hi Chiron. Right, because yes. I just call it that, that planetary yes. body. I'm like, oh, hi, Chiron. I see what you're doing. I'm like, isn't that so funny? I'm like, oh, that's so, that's hilarious. That's so interesting that you were trying to make me think that way and trying to make me shrink back. And I get it, but come on, I hear you. But no, nah, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. This is for me. I'm going to show up. I'm going to do it in this way. So you start to have a different relationship because your fear is you. Mm. And I think that Whenever we are demonizing any part of us, whether that be our fear, whether that be our anger, whether that be our grief, whether it be our frustration, we're chopping up ourselves. Yes. And we're diminishing ourselves instead of being like, I am all of me. Mm. Yes, I'm my 
brilliant magnetic energy. I'm the person who I'm like, I'm going to publish a book in three months and do all those things. But I'm also the person who experiences the fear and experiences Mm. the grief and experiences the depression and the low times at times. And that is also a part of me and who I am, but I love myself for all of it. Yes. And that's really when things start to shift and start to change and you stop falling into that pattern of, Thoughts are facts and feelings are facts because mm. they're not. They're not, yeah, and we create stories from them. But if you feel them, then I find you create a story that actually empowers you. And I actually have a very similar um, relationship with my fear. Like when it comes up, like I will talk to it. L- like what you said, I was like, I actually do that. Like, okay, thank you. Thanks for bringing that to my attention. Awesome. Like I really appreciate that feedback and um, I'm going to do it anyway, you know, and it does get quieter. And like you said, I think it's because you stop fighting it. I see so many women, you know, we're strong, independent women now. We've kind of been taught to be these strong, independent women and think that it means to fight, to get the swords up to, and we do this to our partners, you know, we do this in every area. Um, And it doesn't work out well for us because it's that, it's, it's resistance. It's resistance and it gets in the way because it creates that tension, you know, and then it can feel like a block or feel like a limitation. Whereas if, like you said, if I befriended, if I listened to it and I'm like, okay, thank you. And actually I've checked in with my body. I've felt my emotions. I've regulated my nervous system. And my intuition is like, this is a full body. Yes. You know, I say a similar thing to my clients. Is it a full body? Yes. Like your job is to drop into your body, feel what you need to feel, say yes to your yes and no to your no. Like it's actually so simple when we break it down like that, when we practice getting into our bodies and you can feel it. You can feel the expansion of the yes once you've, you know, cleaned out your emotional body and your nervous system and you can feel the contraction of the no. And And you get to feel all of it and see it all as working for you. I love that you have really brought that into the conversation, that even your fear is working for you. I mean, how much more beautiful and supportive and loving and powerful does that feel? I know for me, that's a really powerful reframe. You know, I've befriended my fear, but I hadn't quite connected that that's still also working for me which I think is really powerful and something we can take into all areas, relationships, motherhood, business, whatever we're creating, um, which is amazing. Oh my God. I feel like I could talk to you forever. There is so much gold within you. I just feel like it's just like this treasure chest of wisdom that I'm just sitting in front of. And it just like brings out more wisdom in me. And I just absolutely love it. I know that everyone listening would have got so much gold And I really encourage you to go and check out Courtney at Seeking Wilder. I love her podcast. I'm going to be on her podcast soon and I'm so excited. Cannot wait. Um, Yeah, it's such an experience being in your world, Courtney. Like, so everybody, I cannot recommend enough just getting in her world, whether it's on Instagram or her podcast. I'll put all the links below. I'll also put the link to that incredible book. Remind me, what was it called? Was it The Gift of Fear? Uh, yes, The Gift of Fear is that book that I yes, recommend people amazing. read. I will it's put brilliant. that link below. I cannot remember who it's by at this time. That's okay. I'll put no, the link below. I'll, we'll get the link for you Yes, guys, we'll get the definitely. link and um, and I'm going to read it too. And we'll all read it and then share the feedback. And um, we'd love to hear. And if you've loved this episode, please share it in your stories. Um, rate and review. Let us know what you loved. Um, it means so much to me and Courtney to have that feedback. And thank you so much for your time, your energy, your heart, your essence. I've ab- absolutely loved this chat so much. Oh, thank you so much. It has been absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing to sit and to chat with you this morning. And yes, come say hi if you've listened to this episode and connected with something. Come and jump in my DMs. I I love to connect. I love a chat. So I'd love to to hear from you guys. And if you yeah feel called to support anyway, I've got a retreat in November. <gasps> If How you exciting. are yes, down in Dunsborough <gasps> in November in Western Australia. So right near keep me. your eyes peeled. Oh I don't know. Yeah, I need right to check near it you. Out. I need to check it out. Amazing. Yes, Have you so started good. advertising it? I haven't seen it yet. 
It goes out next week. Just Amazing. so depending when this episode is yes. out, it may be live and we'll have it in the show notes. But if not, I'm sure it'll be all over my Instagram when Amazing. the spots become available. I'm so excited. I'm going to check that out. I love retreats and particularly love all of your amazing work. The the intuitive, the tarot, the the business, um, you know, the business side and also the um astrology. You've just got so many different sides to it, which I absolutely love. So oh my gosh, so exciting. Check that out um to all our beautiful listeners. And thank you so much again, beautiful. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. <laughs>